Good evening. Thank you very much for watching our current affairs update in English, where we'll be taking a look at Malta's economic model. I'll be speaking with Dr. Mario De Marco. Dr. DeMarco for Thank you. joining our program. Thank you. I'd like to speak about various things that we're seeing uh, in the news. In your opinion, can we speak a bit about the, the economic model in Malta? Do you think it's sustainable? Well, I, I think we're at the moment experiencing uh, an overheating of the economy. And what do we mean by overheating? Effectively, we're seeing a, a situation where people are saying that the current mode of economy we are experiencing uh, is not producing a quality of life that people want because ultimately economic success is based on a better quality of life whereas one of the biggest complaints of individuals living in Malta is that the quality of life is deteriorating uh, and this is being said not only by the opposition but uh, Minister of Finance Clyde Caruana was recently on record by saying that listen uh, to sustain the current economic model, our population has to grow from the current population of 540,000 people living on this island to 800,000 people. Now we know that in the past 10 years the population has grown from something like 420,000 to 540,000. So there's an increase of 120,000 over the previous 10 years. And we know the consequences. We know that we're living in an overdeveloped island. Our country was already one of the most densely populated countries within the EU. It has become even more densely populated. As a result of this, our infrastructure is not coping. We have problems with drainage systems and overflows into our waters. We have problems with the road infrastructure. We experience traffic jams at any time of the day uh, at most of our traffic road junctions. If you go to our hospital services, if you go to the emergency services on another day, it is, has become a constant nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, over the summer months, we have experienced also power cuts for days on end and hours on end. Why? Because our distribution network is not coping with the demand, also as a result of the increase in population. We're also seeing, as a result of the increase in population, property prices go up, rental prices go up. Uh, young Maltese people who are being outpriced of the property market. A generation which is seeking its future, not in our country, not in Malta, but overseas. Why? Because they are driven out by property and the current economic model of Malta. So I think that the reality is that we need to rethink our economic model. Mm -hmm. But before we need to do that, we need to determine what is our economic vision. Where does Malta want to go in terms of carrying capacity? What is the ideal number, be it in terms of tourism, be it in terms of people who are working here, be it in terms of expats, be it in, in in terms of our regular population, what is the number that our country can realistically carry? Mm -hmm. Once we carry out that carrying capacity exercise, we need to then decide what type of economic vision we want for the future. It's only after having decided on an economic vision that we can then decide what is the economic model and what are the various niche economic sectors that we want to target and work towards. Mm -hmm. Do you think we really need all these uh, people coming uh, from third countries? You know, the food deliveries, the, the taxis. Do, do you think we can cope with less of them? Look, rather than 
decide on whether we need so many foreigners or not. The issue is whether we need to grow our population so much. So I wouldn't really make a distinction at this moment in time as to whether mm. they are third country nationals, Europeans or Maltese. Mm. The reality is, what is the number of people that this country of ours mm -hmm. can carry? Mm -hmm. Secondly, a lot of these third country nationals are coming to Malta for very low income jobs. Uh, is this the economic model that we want? Labour believed that they could grow the economy by growing the population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a consequence of an economic model that they actively pursued. Edward Mshikluna, today Governor of the Central Bank, then Minister of Finance, used to firmly believe that the only way Malta can be competitive on the international scene is by getting many third country nationals to live in Malta, to work in Malta, at very low wages. This was also the economic model which was pursued actively by former Prime Minister Joseph Muscat and his then head of Jobs Plus was no other than Clyde Caruana, today Minister for Finance, today saying that the current economic model is unsustainable. Today we realise that that model pursued by Joseph Muscat, Edward Cicluna, Clyde Caruana is not the correct economic model because it was based on low income jobs and on work which had very little value added. Now the reality is that economic models are not turned on and off by the switch of a button so we cannot reverse what has been done over the past 10 years overnight but we need to have a vision. And we need to have a vision which is shared by all stakeholders. Okay? And if we have an economic vision for this country, which is shared by all stakeholders, which is not based on low income jobs, but based on better salaried jobs mm -hmm. and, and, and work which is really giving something in return to this country, then I believe we'll have a more sustainable economy which can create a better quality of life for this country, which is based not simply on numbers, but on quality. Mm -hmm. Are you also referring to new sectors? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We need to have new sectors which are not dependent on number and volume of people mm -hmm. working here mm -hmm. on low income, mm -hmm. but maybe having less numbers but better paid jobs, mm -hmm. which can give more in return to our youth and younger generation. Mm -hmm. We've seen very little uh, creation of new sectors over the last 10 years. The, the reality is there was no sector mm. which was created over the last 10 years. So we have seen simply an expansion of current sectors. Mm. Uh, the only sectors which were created over the last 10 years was the sale of passports, okay? the attempt of creating Malta as a blockchain island, which brought us into this repute with the association with cryptocurrency. Okay, uh, the, the, the attempt of creating a, 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 a cannabis industry in Malta, okay, I mean all things which got us in the spotlight mm -hmm. for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. We saw how Malta ended up being grey listed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and thankfully though now we have been out of the grey listing. But getting back your reputation does not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. One has to mm -hmm. work hard to get back the, the reputation which Malta ultimately deserves. Mm. You spoke about resident numbers that seem to be uh, on the increase. What about the addition of tourists and tourists who don't spend uh, a lot of money? We've been talking for a very long time about improving quality instead of quantity. What are your views about that? Again, even here, we need to decide what is the carrying capacity of this country, both in terms of normal residents, but also in terms of, 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 of tourists. I mean, the current number of tourists is more or less, in, the, uh, in 2019, it was 2.7 million. Okay, uh, this year we'll probably be again coming back to close to that number. But again, are we chasing numbers as opposed to chasing mm. contribution mm -hmm. towards the economy? Mm -hmm. What is the magic number going to be? Three mm -hmm. million, mm -hmm. four million, five mm -hmm. million? There was a study recently made by Deloitte uh, 
who are advisors also to the World Hotels and, Resident, and, and Restaurants Association, the MHRA, uh, which said with the number of bed stock coming on these islands, in other words, the number of total hotel beds by existing hotels and applied for and permitted hotels, this country would need something close to five, nearly yeah, six million tourists to make these hotels sustainable. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the reality we know that our country cannot in any way, by any stretch of the imagination, host six or even five million tourists. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're having problems hosting 2.7 million mm -hmm. tourists mm -hmm. as a result of also the growth mm -hmm. in population. So I think we need to try and aim at revising the tourism model. Mm -hmm. uh, by doing that, we also need to improve our tourism product, mm -hmm. okay, to make sure that we get better spending tourists. Because it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't have a better spending tourist coming to Malta. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we promote ourselves as if we were the Magaluf mm -hmm. of the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. that was never our ambition. Mm -hmm. Okay, when in previous national administrations we invested in the tourism product, we invested in having a glorified and restored Fort St. Angelo, Fort St. Elmo, okay, mm -hmm. uh, the piano project in Valletta, mm -hmm. okay, the investment in, in so many important tourism niches mm -hmm. in Malta. The aim was not simply to add volume, to add numbers, but to have tourists who are just ready to spend more than the previous average spend, mm -hmm. which will give more money and revenue to the Maltese island and to the Maltese economy. In your opinion, what type of investment should this government be looking at to increase the per capita spend? Of the, the first thing we need to do is ensure that we don't only have five stars hotels in water, but the surroundings of our hotels are five stars. Uh, if you go outside right now, St. Julian's, Parcheville, Slema, Pojimna, unfortunately, uh, the area of these hotels is, is total mayhem. Mm -hmm. We've got traffic jams, we've got dirt, we've got garbage that is not collected, uh, we've got traffic jams. Uh, we, we are suffering from over-tourism, okay? And, and this needs to be regulated. So obviously, we need to first of all start investing in our tourism product mm -hmm. which basically we need to invest properly in the tourist destinations mm -hmm. okay but i'm also one of those who firmly believes that we also need to move away from the current concentration of tourism in four or five areas of umota because the reality is when you go abroad and you want to have a good tourist experience you want to enjoy the real local, authentic mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And today I question how much St. Julian's, Parcheville offers mm -hmm. an authentic tourism experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I would rather see our villages retain their urban cause as authentic as possible and get tourism being spread mm -hmm. to these areas without ruling them. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, by safeguarding what truly exists. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the better spending tourist doesn't want to be in a tower in Parcheville, Absolutely. but he would rather be in a boutique hotel mm -hmm. in one of our traditional villages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The headline performance numbers released by the government are always very optimistic. Do you believe that this reflects reality uh, and the actual experience of Maltese citizens is very uh, far away from that. Really. I think and any performance has to be judged by quality of life. And even if I had to ask anybody out there who is hearing us and seeing us, has your quality of life improved? The reality, it has not. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I go out for a walk, my quality of life has not improved. If I go on a beach, my quality of life has not improved because it's all crowded. Mm -hmm. If I go for a drive, my quality of life has not improved mm -hmm. because I'm stuck in a traffic jam. Okay, if I go to my house to rest, my quality of life has not improved, because most likely the house next door is being demolished and redeveloped. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, that is how you judge mm -hmm. an economic performance mm -hmm. in terms of quality of life. Has the quality of life of your average modern citizen improved? Mm -hmm. Inflation is eating into everybody's pockets. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're heading uh, towards an economic crisis here in Malta? More than an economic crisis, we're heading towards an overheating of the economy. 
Okay, and effectively I think uh, suddenly there are many things out there which are irritating many people, be it in terms of governance, lack of transparency, corruption, okay, quality of life, erosion of the environment, erosion of good governance. There are so many things which are creating, I would say, it's only so much as an economic crisis, but a good governance crisis, an identity crisis of what really makes us Maltese. We have spoken at length about the various corrupt deals, vital stewards, electric gas. How easy is it for the government to repatriate the money? And in your opinion, should it be reinvested in the economy? Well, there are meant to be regulations in place which make this very hard. Uh, anti-money laundering regulations. Mm. Uh, but what we've seen so far is the police take action against mm -hmm. the so-called small fish, uh, but the larger fish who were the real culprits mm -hmm. in the vitals case, okay, in the, in the hospitals case, and in the edge cases, okay, are still running around free. Mm -hmm. We still have to see Joseph Muscat properly investigated. Mm -hmm. We still it's have to see Conrad Mitzi properly investigated. Mm -hmm. It's a very long, drawn-out process. As a legal professional, what are your comments about that? My comments is that the judicial system and the legal system needs a total overhaul. It's unacceptable that we have cases which last tens of years. Okay? Justice must not only be done, but must also be seen to be done. I think it's in the interest of everybody okay, that the time frames for our judicial process needs to be shortened, whilst mm -hmm. ensuring that the rights of everybody are respected and protected. Mm -hmm. The economy today is generating a rising prosperity for a segment of the population. What, in the, what is the reason and how do you think um, we can find a balance for prosperity and the poverty we're seeing also? Well, the reality, if you look at the people who are on the minimum wage, there's no prosperity. If you look at the people, our pensioners, there's no prosperity. If you look at our students, there's no prosperity. If you look, at the, young, if you look at the young couples okay, mm. who are trying to make it out and trying Absolutely. to buy a property, yes. there is no prosperity. Okay, but there is a, a generation, perhaps, of people, uh, of developers, who are being prosperous. Mm -hmm. But at the detriment of the quality of life of many others. I think that is the wrong level of prosperity that we should be aiming at. Mm -hmm. how, how can the government find a balance to balance all this out? Well, the balance of this out has to be ensured by having a proper economic vi vision which benefits not the few, but, but mm -hmm. the masses. This is the reality. So we need to have an economic vision from which everybody benefits and not a few selected people. Mm -hmm. So, in a nutshell, what you're saying is more planning more focus on the infrastructure, right? Through planning, mm -hmm. through economic vision, which is shared by all. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the opposition encourages uh, diversity and inclusion. Do we need to pursue such a large immigrant population? I, I, I repeat, I think the issue is not so much as to whether it's immigrants or not. Uh, the issue has to be, what is the true number that our, mm -hmm. popula that our country needs to have Okay, in order to reach the economic vision that it enhances. Mm -hmm. The current economic trends are unsustainable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Now we need to decide what is a sustainable number for this country. Mm -hmm. Once we've decided on that, then that is when we can decide mm -hmm. as to what should be the population and how can we reach that population number. Mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of ultimately, uh, yes, I believe that whoever comes to live here, okay, we need to be an inclusive society and we really need to respect the conscience of the different people that live on this island. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. uh, the large thing we need to be is discriminatory in any way or any form. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, I repeat, we need to first decide what is the proper carrying capacity of this country, be it in terms of population, be it in terms of tourism. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, we're prepared, uh, in your opinion, for the challenges of emerging technologies, of artificial intelligence, and also the increase in the aging population in this country? Well, we can only be prepared by having a proper education system. Okay, and, 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 and again, you can only have an education system which prepares you for the future if you know what is the type of future that you want. 
And this is where I am concerned because we are providing courses at university, at MCAS, at secondary level, without really having a proper economic vision in place. Okay? So the people who are at university today are going to be working in the economy, not of tomorrow, but of today. Mm -hmm. The people who are, being at, who are at secondary level today are not going to be working in the economy of 20 years' time, but in the current, within the current economic vision mm -hmm. and reality. So I repeat, we can only be geared for AI, for emerging technologies, to the extent that we decide that it, this is the future for our economic vision. Okay? Once we design an economic vision, once we embrace that economic vision, then we need to ensure that the education system is working hand in hand with that vision. Thank you. Uh, the EU elections are very close now. They're just around the corner. What uh, is your opinion about people who won't exercise the right to vote because they think it's not important enough? Well, the right to vote is precisely that. It's a right to vote. I would dare say it's also an obligation because it's an exercise in responsibility. Uh, the right to vote is the biggest exercise in democracy. Now, I can decide to have a protest vote by not voting. That is also an exercise in democracy. But if I want to be part of change, I think the best form of being part of change is by exercising my right to vote and actually voting. Mm -hmm. What about foreigners who are living in this country? I mean, some of them are registered now on the electoral register. I, I believe, again, they should, they should be part and integral of the voting exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, they are here, they are embraced by our society, and, and I, I think they want to be active participants in the democracy of our society. And to be so, I think they have a responsibility and a moral obligation to go and exercise the right to vote, which they rightly have. Thank you very much. Thank you Thanks very so much, much, Dr. DeMarco. Pleasure. to take a look at the service by Net News. Over the last few months there has been an increase in criticism and pressure on Prime Minister Robert Abella with regards to the unsustainability of the country's current economic model. The current economic model is unsustainable, said former Labour Party councillor and activist Desmond Zamit Marmara recently. He added, there are cranes everywhere, environmental damage, concrete blocks all around the Maltese Islands and the worrying increase in the number of foreigners amongst us. All of this is reducing the quality of life in Malta and Gozo, he said. Zamit Marmara stated that if the population of the Maltese Islands continues to increase at this rate, the quality of life in Malta and Gozo will inevitably deteriorate and take a turn for the worse. He referred to the continuing increase in traffic and roadworks and said that the waiting lists at Mater Dei Hospital are continuing to grow with rampant construction everywhere. He also emphasised that the pressure on the energy supply in the country will therefore continue to increase, and this may result in further power cuts. Despite the pressure, the government has not made any attempts to move away from this economic model. Malta's current economic model generated no end of criticism from the former editor of the Labour-leaning Gazette, L'Horizon, Franz Gershi, the former Labour Party deputy leader, Joe Brinkart, and the former Labour Party minister, Everest Bartolo.
Thank you very much for watching our current affairs briefing in English, where I was speaking with Dr. Mario De Marco about Malta's economic model. Should you have any comments or queries, please send them to the number that appears on the screen. We're stopping for a short commercial break.